Dominicans to go to the polls in a month. And in sports, West Indies beat Afghanistan in their first match of the ODI series. I'm Ricard Robertson. This is Caribbean in 10 for Wednesday, November 6, 2019. I'll be back with the details after the break. Beside me is Mrs. Pearl Duke Or. She's a usual patron of the Blue Food Festival in Bloody Bay. Now, Mrs. Or, tell me, what keeps you coming back to the Blue Food Festival? Oh, of course, to enjoy the ambience of this beautiful village, Bloody Bay. Also, to enjoy the food that is being prepared and also, you know, be entertained by the guests we have here today. And I see you're having an ice cream. Is this dashing ice cream? How's it tasting? Let our viewers know. Mmm. There are a lot of kids today who are acting out because they don't have the professor or someone who's focused enough or involved enough with that individual to say, you know what? You have something. I'm going to help you discover it. Yeah, um, I used to be a school principal of Ross Elementary School in D.C. and assistant principal of Tubman Elementary School. So I saw firsthand how kids can get discounted very early on in life. And I think that uh, moment when a child is discounted, whether it's a teacher or whether it's a parent, Dominicans will go to the polls one month from today to elect a new government. Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt announced the December 6th date last night at a public meeting of his Dominican Labour Party. Nomination day is in just under two weeks, Tuesday, November 19th to be exact. Both the incumbent DLP and the opposition United Workers Party are feeling a full slate of 21 candidates, and Skerritt called on voters to conduct a peaceful and responsible campaign. My dear people, my dear people I appeal to all within the sound of my voice. I appeal to all within the sound of my voice to let us strive for peace and maturity in the conduct of this general election. We are one people. We have a nation to build. We have an image to safeguard. Let us conduct this general election campaign in an atmosphere of civility and responsibility. Let us respect each other's rights and property. Let us emerge from this exercise, the envy of the region and the world, with a clear mandate from the people and by the people for a new season of development for this beautiful country of ours. In other news now, the opposition People Liberal Party, PLP, in the Bahamas says it supports freedom of expression amid controversy over planned gay pride events. Pride Bahamas will hold a series of events celebrating the LGBT community scheduled to run from October 5th to 12th next year. They will be staged under the theme, The Rebirth of Pride, Bahamas Centering LGBTIQA people in the Bahamas' future. The Bahamas Christian Council has suggested that the event contravenes the preamble of the Constitution with which speaks to the nation's foundation of Christian values. And it said it will mount a series of events opposing the Pride celebration that will focus on the traditional heterosexual family. But PLP leader Philip Davis says his party supports freedom of expression and will not pick sides in this matter. I think the Christian Council, they have, they have just as everyone, just what I call the freedom of expressions. And so as the Christian Council have freely expressed uh, their, themselves in relation to the issue, others likewise could do so. So it is, we, there's a right and our constitution guarantee you know, for freedom of expressions, freedom of us to form our own opinions and views. And we, ought, we are able to do that, and ought able to be, we ought able to do that without fear of, of um, reprise, reprisals, victimizations, or any other of the penal consequences that should follow. 
CARICOM Chairman Anne St. Lucia's Prime Minister Alan Chastney is calling on all stakeholders in Haiti to engage in meaningful dialogue to resolve the political crisis in the country. And he says CARICOM is willing to facilitate that dialogue. Dozens of people have been killed and wounded, while foreign embassies and other property have been attacked in ramped up demonstrations across Haiti in recent weeks as opposition parties try to force President Juvenal Moïse out of office. They have accused Moïse of mismanaging funds from the petro Carib initiative, but he has denied all allegations. Chastney said CARICOM is saddened and concerned by the deepening of the crisis in Haiti. He says the group, quote, deplores the destruction of property and livelihoods, the deteriorated humanitarian situation, and the increasing death toll resulting from the breakdown of law and order, which has intensified over the past seven weeks, end quote. And he said while CARICOM supports fully the enjoyment of the right to freedom of assembly, it urged that this be done in a lawful manner. Chastney said the protracted political crisis has upset the political and economic stability of the country and prolonged disruption of people's daily activities and can only be resolved peacefully through constructive dialogue. The CARICOM chairman therefore appealed to all parties involved to commence a meaningful discourse in good faith to restore order and normalcy to Haiti. And stay with us, your Midday Sport is next. It's no secret that reading to children is essential for their optimal brain development. But an NSF-funded research team led by Lisa Scott at the University of Florida has discovered that reading books that name and label people and objects are even better. Babies came into Scott's Brain Cognition and Development Lab twice, once at six months old and again at age nine months. Eye tracking and EEG measured attention and learning at both ages. Let me start with you, Mr. Winstow. What, what would need to happen? You say you support this. What needs to be built first? Um, well, cities are more than buildings, as has been said here. Um, and unfortunately, I'm, I'm, we're not hearing the discourse about the other things. Uh, public space, uh, public parks, uh, proper uh, pedestrian-friendly streets, um, a general... What's, what's that? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's streets with proper sidewalks. A brilliant knock from Ruston Chase and an unbeaten half century by opening batsman Shea Hope was enough to help roll over Afghanistan by seven wickets in the first ODI at Lucknow, India today. Pursuing a target of 194 set by the Afghans, Chase smashed 11 boundaries in 115 ball 94 as the Windies raced to the target with 21 balls to spare. Hope was the other batsman on the hunt for runs as he added an unbeaten 77 of 133 balls. All the other top order batsmen, namely Evan Lewis, Shimron Hetmeyer and Nicholas Puran fell cheaply. Earlier, Ramat Shah and Ikram Akhil both stroked, or that's Ali Kill, both stroked enterprising half centuries, but West Indies bowlers hit back to bowl Afghanistan out for a modest 194 and take the upper hand. Ramat struck a top score of 61 of 80 balls and Ikram 58 of 62 deliveries in an 111-run third-wicket stand, which frustrated the Windies. However, the Caribbean side then pressed home the advantage, snaring the last six wickets for just, th for just 42 runs. And Cricket West Indies has named a 14-member squad to take on India women in a five-match T20 international series to be played on November 9th and 10th at the Darren Sami Cricket Stadium in St. Lucia and on November 14th and 17th. That's Caribbean in 10. Good afternoon.